it's time to look at that. It's time to look at the expansion of all conference championships and, and, and not conference championships, but national championships. To your point on the, the men's basketball tournament or women's basketball tournament, the greatest championship we have are those tournaments as far as just the access um, currently. And you have 32 AQs and then you have 34, 36 uh, at large bids. I think where we're, 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 we're needing some dialogue is in not only looking at the men's basketball and women's basketball tournament, but some of the other tournaments that have fewer opportunities. When you have, you have this, this compression that I feel that we have to address in the sense that you have a lot of schools that are spending tremendous amount of resources in, in sport, sports and not having a chance to access those championships. Um, I certainly felt like we needed, more, we deserved more than five ACC teams last year on the men's side, and I felt like we, need, we deserved more than eight on the women's side. But the numbers are the numbers, and again, my perspective and our perspective of the ACC, I'm not interested in cutting back those AQs. Those AQs matter. That's part of the, the broad-based opportunities that we have in Division I sports, is the lower resource conferences and the higher resource conferences can all gain access. But baseball, I certainly felt like we had several teams that got, you know, should have gotten in. And in baseball, the team that the committee indicated was the last team in won the national championship. And so I look at NC State in that example where they, they deserve to be in. So at the time is now. The time is now as we're looking at the overall structure of the NCAA. And one of their responsibilities has been championships. So I'm in favor of looking at it and I really would like us to expand. But, and I'll finish here, the but is you have to look at what does that do to the season? How many more games are we talking about? What are the financial implications? What does it do to conference championship season? So similar to what we've done in the CFP, I think we'll have to do the same across the sports that are sponsored from an NCAA level. Well, logistics first of all right and and how does it affect the regular season how does it affect your conference play uh, maybe at a weekend um, may, maybe there's first round buys for teams that are ranked at a certain level or seated at a certain level so it's a it's it's a rubik's cube you know times two but the the ability to increase a championship can happen it, it can happen. There'll be a lot of work that needs to be done. It has to be done thoughtfully. We need to make sure we're listening to the membership. But in the end, you know, I saw that what, what came out uh, of the council last week, like you did, about maybe, maybe the guideline should be 25%. I don't know that we can reach that in every sport. Uh, but I think the closer we can get to that number is best for student athletes. But what do you do during the regular season? What do you do during conference play? You can't just add a bunch of new games. So there's got to be a little bit of give and take in that. But I, I, David, I think it's, I, th I really believe it to be possible. And I don't, I don't think it gets watered down. I don't, I don't believe that the NCAA tournaments get less exciting in baseball or lacrosse or basketball by having additional schools that qualify for it.